Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with another interesting topic today. Somebody asked me, how should we decipher the results of a planet's transit, and especially a planet like Saturn, because Saturn transits in a sign for very for a very long time, right? Uh, for two and a half to three years. So therefore, it becomes crucial for us to judge the results uh, of this transit, right? Because everybody makes uh, videos on uh, Saturn transit, but I mean, whenever Saturn transits a sign, you will see there are a lot of videos on the same topic. But then, for example, if you say that for Aries, Saturn is transiting in their 11th house now because Saturn is in Aquarius. So does it mean that anybody and everybody are going to have like huge massive gains you know they are going to become uh, billionaires overnight or what does it mean right so if there are two Aries ascendants discussing and seeing this transit does it mean that exactly the same identical things uh, will happen to both of them or what what about 100 or what about a million Aries ascendants right so it doesn't work like that so then the question is, how does it work, right? So therefore, the first thing you got to understand, whenever you are discussing about transits, either it's Saturn or Jupiter or any other transit, you got to understand that transits are subordinate, are to be only seen once you see the original horoscope and the dashas, right? So for example, if... Uh, in a horoscope, somebody is running the uh, dasha of a planet which is in the 10th house. Then it simply means that uh, the person will have some promotion or the person will start uh, his own business or the person will take a uh, will take some leave from the job and maybe start uh, his own uh, self-employed work or something like that, right? Freelancing could also be there. But the question is, <laughs> Um, how will you understand what kind of work it will be? Well, for that, you have to see the planet which is sitting in the 10th house, which houses does the planet lord, right? So if the third lord is sitting in the 10th house and then this dasha gets activated, um, then it means that the person will do something related to the third house through which he will gain some name, fame and reputation, right? So if uh, somebody's uh, fifth lord is in the 10th and the planet gets activated, it means that there will be some creativity related work and then the, uh, the person will become famous, right? But then the next step is you got to see what is the nature of the planet. So if the planet is Jupiter, the ambience will be very good. Jupiter, Venus, Moon, Mercury, Sun, they will give very good ambience, which means the people around you will be nice. You will get a lot of perks and so and so. You could also go to a developed country or if it is Saturn Rahu Ketu, you might uh, feel that you are going to an underdeveloped country or the ambience may not be that great. There may not be electricity, there may not be water, there may not be uh, nice food there. So once you see this, you see the house, the house is lauded by uh, the planet, uh, which is sitting in that 10th house. And then third is you see the nature of the planet, right? So these are the three things you see. And then, of course, you see the overall chart. The overall chart will tell you uh, what is the level of the person, right? So for example, if a person has majority of his planets linked with the 10th house or the 11th house, then it is but natural for this person to succeed in the profession. Uh, but if a person has primary planets associated with the fifth house, then the person may not be very interested in profession. The person may be very much interested in you know, creativity and arts, media and all this. So therefore, once you see the dashas and you get a hold of the overall chart, then you understand, okay, this, this, this is what will happen now. But now, then comes the transits. So then you see uh, which, which plan then then you see where where is where are major transits happening the transits will tell you when will the results of the mahadasha and antaradasha be delivered when will it come all right so transits do not tell you what will you get transits tell you primarily when will you get it okay 
So therefore, it's critical that we do not try to judge the results of transits uh, just by seeing the transit itself, because that will lead to a very big blunder, right? So, so for example, if somebody has uh, some childbirth yoga in uh, their horoscope, right, male and female, and then what happens, then uh, Saturn is transiting now in somebody's uh, second house, for example. Now, second house is the house of childbirth, right? Fifth house also, the ninth house and the eleventh house. Fifth house primarily, but the second house also. So then it, it simply means that now if the Antardasha is supporting, the couple might have children, right? Of course, uh, for that you have to analyze both the man and the woman, uh, the wife, husband, wife's chart. But what I'm trying to tell you is, you ought to understand that if a particular event or a particular uh, direction of life is promised in the dasha either it's good or it's bad good or bad for a particular event of life then that event will happen irrespective of any transit the transit will just tell you what uh, when when will it happen right and it, it can at max tell you what kind of people will be associated with it right or which area it will be related to even that the dasha tells you so for example imagine uh, there's a very good dasha coming up for you. You know, you have Sun, Mars in the 10th house, you know, great profession, and you are running Sun Mahadasha, Mars Anta Dasha, right? Now, imagine you, you, your Saturn, your Jupiter, you know, wherever, they are transiting in 5th house, for example, right? So it could be possible that that time when Jupiter enters your 5th house, then it's possible that now you get the promotion because 5th house is the house of promotion, right? But to say that Jupiter entered in my fifth and gave me a promotion, that's that's like a very big uh, blunder, blund blunder of the highest order, right? So therefore, it is imperative that you judge the dashas and then you analyze the transits. And especially when it comes to Saturn, you got to understand that the transit of Saturn, whenever Saturn is transiting into a particular house, you got to understand that that it means that the significations related to the, that house where Saturn is transiting, they will manifest slowly. They won't manifest uh, immediately, right? Like whenever you will see, you know, that planets like Mars, Venus, Mercury, Moon, they transit, they kind of give uh, the Dasha results immediately, but Saturn does not give it immediately, okay? So for example, if you have Sun Mahadasha going, which is only six years, and then you have sun in 10th house, and depending on other combinations, if your uh, Saturn has entered the sixth house now, for example. So then what does it mean? It means that you, you will have to work. You will have to work more now because the sixth house is also the house of uh, daily job, right? And from the sixth, Saturn is going to aspect the eighth house, so it will give you temptations and it will test your uh, ability to say no to temptations, right? And then from there, it will aspect your 12th house. It will test you by giving you uh, allurements and uh, Saturn will see to what extent are you able to control your expenditure, right? Expenditure doesn't only mean expense, expenditure of money. It also means expenditure of your energy. Where do you waste your energy, right? That is also very important. And then finally, uh, it will aspect the second house, right? From the sixth house. So therefore, you got to understand that whenever Saturn is transiting in a particular house and it is aspecting particular houses, which it will always. So every transit will affect four houses, right? Because Saturn sits in one house and aspects four houses, uh, three houses. So for total four houses, right? Four houses uh, are affected. So then you got to understand that I have to be disciplined regarding those houses in context of what the dasha is promising. Okay. So for example, uh, as I said, if sun is in your 10th and you are running sun Mahadasha and Mars is also in your 10th and you are running Mars Antar Dasha and then Saturn transits uh, the 6th house, then you've got to understand that you, although you have sun and Mars in the 10th, which might give you the feeling that you are the king, but 
now because saturn is involved in the sixth house which is like your daily day to day job so it could happen that you might have to work like a subordinate right saturn is the servant but because the promise is there in the dasha the event will happen right either you will get get a big promotion or a new job or something like it will happen okay saturn's coming to the sixth house will not deny you the significations and the promises of the dasha it will not but you got to understand that saturn has come now and uh, he always asks for a price right <laughs> therefore you got to pay the price and the thing is the opposite is also true for saturn which means if uh, saturn is transiting a particular house and you have seen the dasha so even uh, as i said it takes long time to build that but even it's the it's true for the other way around so even to destroy something you will uh, need a long time right so imagine now you may say oh but who would like to destroy right <laughs> but there are many people in kaliyuga who delights in destroying others right delights they are like uh, that's their hobby they do it all the time <laughs> so for them it's a tough time they are going to face a tough time if they are trying to destroy somebody right and of course it depends on their dasha or whatever I mean, and who they are trying to destroy so it depends whose horoscope is more stronger right it could be destruction at any level right so therefore if you are expecting good things it may not be very fast if you are expecting to damage somebody it also may not be fast so either way is you got to learn patience otherwise things uh, will go haywire all right and therefore if you feel that there's a particular house where saturn is transiting and i am somehow becoming very impatient because i'm somehow not able to understand why does it take so long right so that's that's a very important uh, thing for you to understand with that you are not the center of the universe right the universe of course we think like that i am the center of the universe the world revolves rotates moves and dances around me so the problem is there's only one person who is the center of the universe who is that you me <laughs> no we are not fortunately we are not the centers imagine imagine everybody becomes the center of the universe so many centers right <laughs> but that's the problem there can be only one center right and who is that center yes lord krishna says in the gita aham bija prada pita i am the seed giving father of all living entities he does he does not say i am the seed giving father for all indians or you know all germans all men or you know all birds no he says aham bija prada pita and the seed giving father of all living beings all living entities right so therefore if you feel things are getting haywire when there's a new transit of saturn then you got to understand that you have to have patience and how do you cultivate patience by being in the mode of goodness by being in sattva guna because one of the symptoms one of the characteristics of mode of goodness is that you have patience so therefore if you lack patience then you got to come to sattva guna somehow or the other right and how do you come to sattva guna by doing those activities which are in the mode of goodness which are in sattva guna see the modes are like ropes the more you do something the more you do activities which come under a certain mode under a certain guna the more you will get used to doing that right so imagine a person who is drinking all the time <laughs> so did it happen that uh, as in hindi or in movies they say na ma ke pet se sikha aaya <laughs> did they learn from their mother's womb that you know we should drink and come no right what happened maybe they were in their teenage or you know they fell uh, pray to some very demoniac association right they fell in the association of demons thugs crooks idiots rascals and then what happened they did it once they took it once right and then they did it second time third time thoda sa pee le kya ho jayega are pee le thoda 
just take it once right and that one time you do and you're finished you are you're gone for the rest of your life right so they fell into the association of demons rakshasas right in kali yuga especially <laughs> and what happened they were tempted to do it again ek aur baar ek aur baar pi are do baar peene se kya hoga teen baar peene se kya hota hai pi le no pite pite they started drinking once twice thrice four and then the rest is history <laughs> so they became the addicts of the highest order right why because they associated themselves with drinking similarly they would have associated themselves with some other activity like uh, going to a spiritual community and getting enlightened by them they would have become very great uh, sages by now right so therefore you got to understand the more you do something the more you get used to doing that every day every moment so initially it's there in the physical realm then it goes to your head your head is like i want that now abhi chahiye mere ko if i don't get it now i'm going to destroy everybody everybody or at least the things that i can destroy right <laughs> So therefore, you got to understand that if you are not in sattvaguna, if you are always in anxiety, if you do not have patience, your mind is tormenting you all the time. Mind is pressurizing you. You are messed up inside. Then you really got to make some serious <clears throat> lifestyle changes. You know, get up early in the morning, do some spiritual practices, do some chanting of mantras, do some yoga, pranayam, do some exercise. read the bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam associate with uh, spiritually minded people uh, in the weekends and uh, take vegetarian food right stay away from intoxication stay away from um, adult material watching adult material in the internet and also stay away from uh, watching anything which excites you sexually right so if you, if you if you do these very very basic easier said than done but if you start doing this then you will realize that your mind is now peaceful it's calm and you are able to focus on your work right whatever work it can be it can be office work business work spiritual work family work health work any work i am not meaning profession or money here any work that you do you will be able to focus properly right even if you are spending time with your family or children you will be very happy right and the biggest um indication is everybody will be want to be they, everybody will want to be with you right because you will develop patience what happens when you develop patience you become a good listener right have you seen those people you go to talk and they start blabbering their mouth about themselves right do you really want to talk to them maybe not right so do you want that you become another example for people to stay away from or do you want to become an example that everybody loves right so the choice is yours therefore transits of saturn can be very difficult sometimes but you got to understand that you have to cultivate patience otherwise it's not going to work the more you are angry and agitated the more you are going to be miserable so don't be miserable and do that uh, what is do that which is required right which is enlighten yourself spiritually and understand that god is great we are not the center of the universe right there is a center but that is somebody else right so the more you learn about god the more you understand about god the <clears throat> the more you're going to understand that all my problems these are very superficial all right <clears throat> thank you very much for your patience and patience <laughs>